G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at some more string instructions. So we've got two to get through, there's scan string and load string, and we're also going to introduce the remaining two repeat prefixes. Okay, so first things first, scan string. Um, just like store string, there's five versions of scan string. First of all, there's SCAS, which takes a single operand and its memory. There's SCAS B to scan a string in bytes. SCAS, we should go up in order. SCAS W to scan a string in words. SCAS D to scan a string in w, double words, and SCAS Q to scan a string in quad words. And once again, I choose, it's just my preference, but I choose not to use this version here with the memory operand because it always scans the string that RDI is pointing to. It doesn't scan the string that you give it here as the pointer, and I think that's misleading. Exactly the same as the store instruction, the only thing this memory operand is used for is to determine the size of the string. So you give it a byte pointer, it's going to use this. If you give it a word pointer, it'll use SCAS W. If you give it a D word pointer, it'll use SCAS D. And of course a Q word pointer will use um, SCAS Q. Okay, so I think that's confusing. I don't use this, but you can use it if you like. Alrighty, what does SCAS B do? It, um, well, all of the scans, what they do is they scan RDI for RAX. Okay, so if it's um, SCAS B, then it scans RDI for AL. If it's SCAS W, it scans RDI for AX. If it's SCAS D, it scans RDI for EAX, the double word version of AX. And if it's SCAS Q, then it scans for RAX. Alrighty, so it's pretty similar to the other one. There's um, pretty similar to the store instruction. There's two implied operands here. There's RDI and uh, also RAX. Okay, what it actually does, if I had to draw out a little bit of pseudo assembly to say exactly what the um, CPU is going to do when it sees SCAS B, for example, um, this is what I'd say. It does pretty much. Um, comp AL byte PTR and RDI and add RDI1. So it compares the value in AL with whatever RDI is pointing to and then it increments RDI. I want to point out that this add just here uh, is different from the regular add because this add in my little example really doesn't exist and um, the, the, the flags register will reflect whatever the compare has, despite the add. So it might be easier to think of it like um, the add happens up here. Add RDI1 and then byte pointer at um, uh, RDI-1. But I, I prefer to think of it that the add sort of happens after, it really doesn't really matter. But just be aware that this add here isn't going to affect the flags that this uh, compared before it has set up. Okay, so you use this to um, find a particular value in a string, and by itself it's not very useful. So SCAS B will tell you if um, RDI happens to be pointing to something that's the same as AL, and then it'll increase uh, increment RDI, but that's not very useful. Um, you might as well just do the compare yourself. So what you usually end up doing is um, using the other repeat prefixes. So there's two more that we'll introduce and then we'll go through how to use them with the scan instruction. Okay, repeat E slash repeat Z. Um, these are aliased to each other, so you can type whichever one you want, it's the same and it's um, repeat while equal or repeat while zero um, this pretty much means um, repeat the following instruction while the zero flag equals one flage what the okay but additionally it also means um, and RCX does not equal zero. Okay, so the other two are the opposite of those, NE and rep NZ, which means repeat 
Wow. Zero flag equals zero. And once again, RCX does not equal zero. So these count down RCX, just like the um, rep, the original repeat prefix. Only these also have an additional ability, and that's to read the zero flag. Is that cool? I think that's pretty easy. Let's get on to an example. So what you sort of do is you um, point RDI to the string that you want to scan. You load the value that you're looking for into the appropriate version of AX. And you put in RCX the maximum value. So let's say that we've got a string over here in memory. And we'll say that it's um, just four characters long. A, B, C, and D. And let's say that we want to know if this string has a C in it. What we could do is say, well, so this, this line just here is moving the string into RDI, wherever it is. Maybe it's in uh, RCX. Yeah, we'll say that. We'll say we will pass the string in RCX. So this is the start of our procedure, and we'll pass the string in RCX, so we move that over to RDI, which results in pretty much this. Then we put the value that we're looking for into AL, since we'll be using um, SCAS B, we'll scan it for bytes, it's a byte string. You could use words if you want, I don't mind. Okay, MOV AL, and we'll look for C, shall we? And you put the maximum value, which is 4, this string's 4 long, you put the maximum value into RCX, and then you'll write to call um, rep nz scas b. And what is this going to do? Well, it's quite cool actually. What it's going to do is pretty much um, while rcx does not equal zero, um, dig rcx comp al to byte ptr and rdi um, add rdi and 1 and jz break loop curly brackets ok then we have break loop out here ok let's have a bit of a look at exactly how this is going to work so for a start um, we can see that it's, it's put a loop because of the rep not zero it's put a loop around the um, two instructions here. Now these two instructions just here are the uh, SCAS B instruction, exactly as we saw before. Now the loop does two things. Number one, uh, it checks RCX and it decrements RCX. Um, yeah, so this will uh, make sure that we don't overstep the bounds of our array. But the second thing that it does, and this is where the NZ comes into it, is as soon as this fails, nz, not zero, uh, it jumps out and breaks the loop as well. So there's two ways to stop this loop. Uh, the first way is that rcx becomes zero, and the second way is if we find the value that we're looking for, which is the c in this case. Okay, so we've got a few more things. Let me just put over here, maybe. al equals c, and rcx equals four. Just draw a bit of a a straight line. Okay, we've also got ZF equals zero. Okay, so we've we've run through all of this stuff, these first three lines, and now we'll just have a bit of a demonstration of exactly what the CPU will do when it sees rep NZ SCAS B. The first thing that it's going to do is um, check if RCX equals zero. Well, RCX at the moment is four, so he's going to say no, and he's going to be decremented to three is that line right there. And then the next line, compare AL to whatever RDI is pointing to. Well, we can see what RDI is pointing to. It's pointing to an A. They're all supposed to be characters, by the way. And compare AL to an A up here. Because AL's got a C in it, it's going to result in the zero flag still uh, being zero. I mean, uh, it's not going to be set. So the next thing it'll do, we'll add one to RDI. Move him up to 
there and jump zero break loop. Well the zero flag isn't set so the jump's not going to be taken. Instead it'll go back up to the top and it'll say Mr. RCX are you zero? RCX will apply Goshner on three. He'll decrement himself to two because of the second line and will perform another compare. This time AL with B. Once again they're not equal so the zero flag won't be set. Instead RDI will be incremented by one to point to the C now and jump zero break loop. Well we can't take that jump because the zero flag is still not set. Alrighty, so we go back up to the top of the loop. Is RCX zero? Well, RCX is two at the moment, so he's going to say, no, I'm not zero. He's going to decrement himself to one. And now we perform the compare. Compare AL byte pointer RDI. This time we've got C compared to C. And what's that going to do? Well, that's going to set the zero flag. They're both exactly the same. And we know that the compare instruction performs a subtraction. So the zero flag will be set. Alrighty, so the next line says that RDI will increase. RDI will now be pointing to the D. Um, but the jump zero, break loop, will be taken. And it will jump outside the loop to here. Fair enough. And we'll know that it found the character because the zero flag will be set. So right here we could say JZ um, found and JNZ not found. Fair enough. If you wanted to um, just route the uh, instruction pointer and deal with uh, whether or not the uh, item was found, maybe you could put negative 1 in EAX if it wasn't found or something like that. I don't know. But the other thing is if you want to know the um, position that it was found, the index that it was found, uh, outside of this rep NZ you can say something like uh, of, uh, oh, we might use. Yeah, we use we use the whole RAX. Of RAX four, so you move the value into RAX that was um, the initial length of the string. So it's four in this particular case. Then sub RAX and RCX. So you subtract the value that uh, RCX got to. So in our particular instance here, it was one which will mean um, 4 minus 1 equals 3 and the next thing that you've got to do is sub 1 again from RAX or DEEK RAX and that, those lines just there will leave the um, then if we've got ret down here, that will leave the index that the value was found so that's saying that we found a C in um, 0, 1, 2, right here, 2 so the C was at position number 2 in the array. Does that make sense? I hope so. But you'd also have to, um, just here, you'd have to, um, just like we had before, if it was, um, if the zero flag wasn't set, then you'd have to set REX to negative 1 and return that instead. Otherwise you might be uh, making something misleading. Anyway, that's a little implementation of something similar to an index of, using the scan string instruction. And I think over the page we've probably got time to get Alright, well this is embarrassing. I screwed up my LOD S tutorial. Oh no. So I'm going to give it another shot. Here we go. Load string. Um, the mnemonic for load string is LOD S and MEM or LOD SB to load a byte. LOD SD LOD S oh, Actually that should be other way around, load a double word, load, load a word, uh, LOD SQ. Okay, so there's five versions per usual, and as per usual, I choose not to use this version because I think it's misleading, um, but it's just the same as the other ones. This is not the string that it's actually loading from. This is um, just an indication of the memory size. So load string's even easier than the other string uh, instructions. All that it does is MOV say AL what PTR RSI and add RSI 1. This is um, load byte um, RSI now we're using the source index instead of RDI the destination index 
uh, it just loads whatever RSI is pointing to into the appropriate size of AL and increments RSI. So for a byte, it looks pretty much like that. Of AL byte pointer RSI, add RSI1. For, say, a double word, it would look something like EAX. And this one would be a D word pointer. And this, of course, would be for. OK, folks, so it's as simple as that, really. It's just another way to move data into EAX. Now, you can use one of the repeat prefixes. You can use rep, R-E-P. So we could do something like LOD, S-B. But there's no point. Um, this would repeat this instruction just here, LOD, S-B, however many times is uh, indicated in RCX, as per usual, in the rep instruction, uh, rep prefix, sorry. But there's no point, because there's no... There's nowhere that you can um, do anything with the value that you load. So what's more usual is to not use rep, since it's pointless with LOD SB. What's more usual is to put it in a loop. So something like my loop, just like that, and then LOD SB, and um, do whatever you've got to do with the value that you loaded in uh, AL, and then just as per usual in a loop, Deek RCX and jump not zero to my loop. So all it really uh, saves us is um, we don't have to add another line down here. Well, sorry, we can do this single instruction just here instead of these two lines just here. Yeah, it just increments through the array for us. So that's pretty much all there is to the load string instruction. Lot SB, lot SD, lot SW, and lot SQ. And uh, just be careful, it's not using RDI, it's using RSI. Alrighty, so yeah, point that to your string, and off you go. Thank you for listening.